Hey everybody, Chris here from Test the Speed Shop. Uh, back out here working on the uh, Firebird. And today I got a package from Summit. So let's dig in here and see what we got. So I got a Mr. Gasket um, advanced kit for a uh, Doco Points distributor. I got a Protronix igniter kit. Um, I'll tell you why I went with this here in a minute. This is a lobe sensing um, igniter kit. This isn't the one that has the goofy ring with the metal stuff in it. And then I also got a got a flamethrower um, coil that go along with it. So one of the reasons why I ended up going with the Protronix is that I was going to go with the Summit's ignition box and hook it to the points. The problem is is that I don't really have any place to hide it. And I like to hide these boxes and stuff and I usually put them next to the battery. The problem is is that this wheel well, as soon as it gets past this battery tray, it drops off. And then there's a little spot there I could have bolted it to the side but I don't think there's enough room there to put the box I don't like mounting them on the fender well or on the firewall I kind of wanted to keep this kind of sanitary and keep it kind of hidden hidden away so I was gonna go with the Protronix 3 and that has a rev limiter and they say it's supposed to have multiple spark well then I read up on it and the multiple spark is because it has such a low ohm rating on the primary side of the coil is that it, it causes it to rise up faster it'll 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 recover from the initial charge from the initial spark quicker and it acts like it has a second spark so that's not really a true multiple spark deal so I looked at that and that was like hundred and forty dollars and then I looked at the igniter too and it really doesn't have much more advantage over the one that we have here so I ended up going with this one and the coil, the advanced kit and the uh, Protronix module cost me what it would have cost for the, the Protronix 3 and the Protronix 3 you have to buy a special coil for it and you have to use their own special coil because it's a low ohm coil so they can have that fast rise time. So that's why I ended up going with this plus with this you can actually hook this up to a um, a uh, MSD box or one of their boxes or whatever if I want to do that uh, the other thing is is you get rid of the resistor wire with this and you run 12 volts from your ignition switch right to the coil with this also so you're not cutting voltage down so I think this will pretty much suffice what we need to do here on this car because I mean this engines pretty much stock I mean we don't really need some big crazy ignition system so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to start tearing into it here. Um, read over the directions. Probably going to have to pull the distributor out. So um, let me go ahead and get to it and uh, I'll get back to you. Well here we are everybody. Working away. Got everything taken apart. Got the module in. Just going to run our wires. Hook our coil up and uh, run a 12 volt wire from our fuse box out to our ignition coil and uh, hopefully this thing will start and run and run better so uh, we'll see so far it's been going uh, going pretty good it's not it's pretty straightforward it's really not all that awfully difficult um, got the points laying here I'll probably put them in a box and uh, hang on to them this is the, the wire and the grommet and everything so probably hang on to that kind of stuff until the Protronics Voodoo proves itself so all right let me get back at it well here we are we got everything wired up we got our module in and we got our module wired up ran a 12 gauge wire 
to the ignition terminal on the uh, in the fuse box and ran that back into the into the bulkhead so we have straight 12 volts running to our coil and to our protronics so uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep on going here I'm gonna slap the cap on in the rotor uh, hit the key and we're gonna see if it's gonna fire up or not so uh, we'll get back to you in a minute here um, I didn't really run into any issues um, we had some problems with the coil bracket because the Pontiac coil bracket is like six different pieces and it you just can't get everything together other than that it was all pretty straightforward it wasn't bad at all um, putting it in and stuff I mean I didn't even take the distributor out which is kind of nice I was able to get in there and get that unit in there without having to take it all apart so let's get this thing together and uh, see where we end up at and uh, we'll get back to you in a minute okay everybody I'm back with you uh, we had a little bit of a shit show with uh, the wiring having uh, all kinds of issues um, evidently this isn't like the Chevelle the Chevelle has an ignition terminal in the fuse box that you can plug into that's 12 volts and if you turn the key on it powers up when you're cranking it's got power and when you turn the key off it it, it, it cuts the power out this car doesn't have this all the terminals down there are hot when you turn the key on and when you turn the key off there's only one and that doesn't have any juice cranking it only has juice in the run position so we had it hooked into that and the car would start up only after you let the key off so we went ahead and disconnected that we found another terminal and it was hot when the key was on but I didn't check it cranking it so we ended up hooking up there and it fired it up and we had it running and everything well we go to turn the car up well then we can't turn the car off so I had to find a 12 volt ignition source for this and there was a wire a black wire that was hooked to the uh, coil that was in the factory harness but I thought it was the resistor wire so what I ended up doing we ended up hooking that black wire up we ended up hooking it up and I put my meter on it and uh, we cranked it and lo and behold it has 12 volts <laughs> going to it so we never had a resistor wire on this ignition so I don't know what's going on I don't know if something got rewired here or if the car just doesn't have a, a, a resistor wire in it or if it used a ballast I, I don't think these use ballast resistors so it just seemed kind of odd to me that there wasn't an ignition spade terminal in the fuse box that you could plug into that kind of threw me for a loop too because my Chevelle had it my Monte Carlo had it I mean it was you just plugged right into it but this thing didn't have that so after a bunch of frustration and then finally getting it to the point where it'll start and run I just we just went inside because I just pretty much had enough so I just had dinner with the wife calm down a little bit so now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up here clean this mess up that I got laying everywhere and uh, tidy this up a little uh, fire it back up so uh, when I get this started I'll uh, get right back to you oh well, here we go we got it running sounded pretty decent double checked our uh, wire there we definitely have 12 volts going to that coil which is fine because you know that works out real well because I don't have to try and tap it in anything it just kind of seems kind of strange that there's 12 volts going to that but hey whatever I'll take it pretty good I look pretty decent you have to bump that up a little bit I 
think that concludes this part of it. So we've got a four barrel of electronic ignition. So take it for a test drive. I did put the uh, I did put the weaker springs in, but the advancement was coming in right away, and it just wasn't liking that. So uh, I'm going to have to play with that a little bit. I'm not going to get time to do that tonight. But at least I got the springs here. It's just going to be messing with it, trying to figure out uh, the combination of what might work and what might not work. It may not work at all. We might be better off with what we have here. I don't know. So uh, we'll see. Until then, I'll see you later.